Shooting Thargoids in a Crate Mark II? Sounds like good fun, doesn't it? Well, I haven't done much of this, so let's see how I got on. Yes, folks, the Crate Mark II, and when kitted out correctly with, some would say, Guardian Gauss cannons, I've got an AX Multi Cannon, Flat Cannons, boy weave Shields, Engineered Boosters and Armour, it can be a good Thargoid killer for the beginner player. I've managed to get the shield health up to over a thousand and the armor health at 3089. Just by engineering and getting the correct build and boosters with this. It's all about the engineering with these ships. So with the recent community goal I got myself onto the Witch Head Nebula where the Thargoids were making a little bit of a mess. There are AX conflict zones everywhere and when you jump into one, first of all you're initially met with a load of scouts, just to get you and ease you in to the battle. Now, with the Gauss cannons that I'm using, they do incur quite a bit of heat, which can also work in your favour, and we'll come on to this a bit later on in the video. The more you fire them, the more your heat goes up. If the Thargoids start shooting that green stuff at you, and caustic missiles and all the rest of it, you're going to start to incur things like caustic damage caustic damage is going to start eating away at your hull and that's depicted as you can see on my screen down there with the icon of the missile and a green bar around my hull health. Now one way to get rid of this is to flip up silent running and cook your ship or just fire off your high energy weapons your temperature will go up to around about 140 with a good volley and that will burn away some of that caustic damage. These are fixed weapons I'm using mostly in regards to the Gauss cannons with the AX multi-cannon being turreted right in the central slot of the crate. Now I've not done an awful lot of AX combat has to be said and I did struggle a little bit in the first two or three sorties moving into the AX conflict zones. However, once you remember to stay inside the conflict zone especially in solo mode, you are going to get the help from the NPCs as well. And that goes a long way. It really does. Now, as you can see, it's cut a few ships in there, all AX'd up, giving those Thargoid Marauders a good old blasting. Now, I had a couple of variants, the Marauder variant, I had the Regenerator, and I had the Berserk. Great. And it lulls you into a bit of a false sense of security because it, not only does it give you a bit of practice by flying around and then shooting your gauss cannons and taking out these smaller scout ships but the problem i found then was then when the big boys turned up well then you really were in trouble and you had to get your thargoid game on but for starting off and you can leave this conflict zone at any time shoot some of those marauders you get a fair old packet in regards to the credits for some of those, they're not too hard either. And with a ship engineered like this, it's not gonna to prove too much of a problem. Other such builds would include, say, a Chieftain as well, which is also really good. Bit more maneuverable, I think, than the Crate Mark II, even though I did find myself with this crate being able to maneuver around with very little problems whatsoever. For those of you interested in the specifics of the build, I went through that on a recent stream and that's available on the channel. And I'll put a link to that as well in the comment section and a card in in this video. Once, however, you get through eliminating all the Marauder Scouts and Berserks and all the rest of it and Regenerators, you're then going to be presented with a frame shift anomaly. And that means the Interceptors are coming. Uh, in particular, the ones that I tend to have a look for on this and was able to defeat was that of the Cyclops, the Cyclops Interceptor, um, the lower end of the margin. I was nowhere near thinking myself as proficient enough to go in against some of the big boys like the Medusa and the Hydra. Not a chance. This was hard enough as well. I also found the fact that when the bigger Thargoids turned up, it was taking a long time for my anti-Xeno scanner to scan them. I had to be in within about 700 to 500 meters, easy to scan them up. That was proving difficult while they were shooting all their green stuff 
at me, you know, eating away at my shields, even with the NPCs taking some of the fire off as well. I did find that a little bit difficult. Uh, the good thing about having these scans of these Thargoids there is not only is it good data for you to be having, but also it identifies the different components that you can target. Or you can just visually use your eyes and see which part of them are glowing. Now one of the first attacks I found when the interceptors turn up is that they'll use their shutdown field. So unless you've got a shutdown field neutralizer, which I haven't got on this ship because I thought, well, I'll just boost away and get well out of the way before any of that happens. Although not in this case. Um, you can always shut that down and you can mitigate against that wave. Fortunately, there's enough NPCs in the area as well to take some of the heat off me. But it didn't stop me incurring a little bit of damage from the Thargon Swarm and the weapons from the Thargoids before my ship was able to reboot. As you can see from this external angle, I did get a little bit of a pasting, which was a shame because I was doing so well. Or at least I thought I was. So when your ship reboots, that's great. Make sure you stay well within the conflict zone. Keep an eye on the Thargoid Swarm uh, and you can use the remote flat cannon that I've got fitted in in this build for that as well um, to try and take them out. But primarily it's targeting the hearts on the Thargoid Interceptors. Now here we've got a Cyclops. One of the hearts will start glowing. You shoot the hearts, give it a good volley. The heart will then break off. The Thargoid will get enraged. Put its shields up, start to regenerate a bit. At that point, you don't want to be anywhere near it. You want to be zooming away somewhere else. If you get any caustic damage, remember, use some heat to get rid of that caustic damage on your ship. And that will allow you to stay in the fight a bit longer. Nice good runs up against the Thargoid, breaking the hearts off as they display themselves. Now, if you've scanned that Thargoid, like I said, you can also select that particular heart and in and away you go. Don't get caught by the lightning like I did, because that's really nasty and it can really end up ruining your day. So you can see on the hull of my ship, my lovely Crate Mark II, all that black stuff is where I've bought off Thargoid caustic damage with the heat. And then getting back to the fleet carrier, it's time to start repairing. But once you're back in the fight, same thing happens again. You know, you've got to make sure you can get rid of the damage and incur as much damage as you possibly can against the Thargoid Interceptors. Well, this has been a quick look at what I did at the AX Zones in regards to the Thargoids and the recent community goal and my crate, which was okay. I was kind of hoping it would have been a bit more powerful than what it was, especially when I've seen some people on YouTube destroying Thargoids with one shot. I've been Ricardo, thanks for watching, see you soon.